on pimples. Don't scrub ahead 15 seconds. Listen to this. Do you like yummy jerky? You do? Well, you're in luck because this episode of the Poundcast is brought to you by LouisvilleVeganFoods.com. LouisvilleVeganFoods.com is where you can find all your favorite flavors of Louisville vegan jerky. They also have toppings and mouthwater and Whelpdale chocolates. And right now, you can get 20% off your entire order if you go to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and use the code word POUNDCAST. That's right, 20 whole percent off your entire order. You could also find Louisville vegan jerky at Whole Foods, Sprouts, and other tight-ass stores. So treat yourself and support the Poundcast by going to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and using the code word POUNDCAST for 20% off. Peace. Welcome to the Poundcast, Brent. Welcome, Brent. I mean, yeah, welcome, Brent. Welcome, Thank Brent. You. Welcome, and Brent. welcome, Doug. Um, welcome. <laughs> today, uh, kind of by request, we have a uh, sort of a champs reunion. I, we'll say this is this episode is dedicated to this person who requested it. I would say, yeah, this is one of our Patreon subscribers. Zane was like, "You should do a. I really wanted." I really want an episode where you get the champs back together. The champs, for those who you don't know, were myself, Neil Brennan, and Moshe Kasher. The first podcast I did a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago or something. And we had a good run, and it was a great podcast. And um, I, still get, I still get tweets and people saying, got to bring back the champs. So that was our attempt to, that's what we tried to do today. And we, we got Neil and Moshe on the show. Um, and they had a guest as well, kind of. And they had a guest. Yeah, the champs, basically, the, the, the idea with the champs is to uh, interview a black person, like a comedian or, you know, an actor. actor. We had musician. various, a musician. We had black guests on the champs. And we actually, Neil was on a hike. So the first half of this episode the sound is a little annoying because Neil was on a hike with Wale, this, uh, the rapper Wale. And, um, and he was using his cell phone signal or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's not great. And you hear, I mean, this, I'm saying the quality is not great. The, um, you're hearing noises from the environment as well. People talking and dogs barking and so forth. And so, but look, we, it clears up and, you know, we talked to, we actually, Wale, we interviewed him a little bit, and um, then we had we got pretty deep near the end. Um, Neil talking about his ayahuasca experiences and things like that, and Moshe talking and, about having a kid. Yeah, so I think, you know, I think this is an interesting episode. And I pretty much stayed quiet most of the time. Just to sort of I kind of did too. I mean, <laughs> I mentioned this in the show, but like when I was on the champs, I was sort of like the sidekick doing the drops and samples. Um, and that's kind of how it went. Cause though you get those two guys together and they are, they got a rapport together and they, um, they're good at conversation. So that's what we got today. I hope you enjoy the show. Um, if you um, want, and then afterwards, me and Brent, you know, we talked for another good 40 minutes. Um, cause we well, do we, it after dark, we do it after dark is what we call it. Post it's a show. Bonus episode. Yeah, it's a bonus episode. Every, if you want to listen to our bonus episodes that we do on every episode, just subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com slash poundcast. It's very cheap and uh, you, can't, uh, you can't go wrong. And that's a good way to support us. And also, as you heard, our sponsor, louisvilleveganfoods.com. Use the code root poundcast to get 20% off. There is a, lot of, there is a bit of um, video watching during the after dark. So you might want to check out the video, which you can... You can, well, I mean, speaking of video, um, you can go to youtube.com slash the poundcast and you can watch videos of the main episodes, but if you, videos for the bonus episodes, you can see, find on the Patreon as well. Yeah. So that's about it. And then another thing with the Patreon is um, the remixes. I put the stems for the, the poundcast theme song up there. And our patrons keep remixing and they keep coming up with cool remixes. And who do we have this week, Brent? This week we have Ed Flores. And he's got a track here called Absolute Bollocks. And that's the, that's the remix for, for this week. 
Okay. Well, cool. Okay. And so, and once again, just one more and a uh, big thank you to Zane for, uh, for this episode. Yeah. Essentially kind of making this episode happen. Yeah. He kind of made it happen. So Zane, I hope this, I hope, I hope, you know, I hope you liked it. There was some, some audio issues, whatever you get it. We tried and um, check it out and roll the clip. This is the remix by Ed Flores. Ed Flores. Ed Flores. Roll it. Roll it. Welcome to the Poundcast. We have a champs reunion here of sorts with uh, Pretty Moshe, great. Moshe Kasher. Uh, you're looking amazing right now with your, with your look. You always blow oh, me away. You. Every time I see you, you have a new look and it's always tight. Yeah, Moshe, can I tell you, can I be honest with you? I am yeah. loving your quarantine looks. <laughs> is that true? Is that sincere? That is absolutely true to the point where I'm like mad at you for not doing this when I used to see you. <laughs> it took a lot. In the mustache, you know? the different mustaches, it's like a different mustache every three days. And then hair lengths. And it's it's pretty pretty great. Did different glasses, no glasses. No, uh, so, well, so I have to say. Wait, is your walking partner? No, somebody. Him? Yeah, no, he was just, he's doing his own <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Man, okay. Thank like, you. Uh, okay. Um, thing, so. Let's do I'll mute. You know, somebody wants to talk. Since there's four of us, we'll do a hand raise to make sure you can get your your line right, in. So did, you arrange, um, did you arrange that record for my press? Neil, I have a question yeah, for you. Good. Can you can you tell the listeners, viewers, what's what's happening right now with you, with your uh, in life? In no, my, uh, like, what happened was, um, I keep telling a buddy of mine that we should take a walk because that's what we do now. And uh, he called me at 1.15 and was like, let's take a walk. And I was like, I got to be done by three. And he was like, that's fine. And then he got to my house at 2.40. And uh, so now we're in a walk. So he's next to me. We're taking a walk. I'm podcasting with the boys. Is he podcasting on another podcast? He's, I believe he's on a business call of some sort. He, he's, yeah, we can actually, I think we can kind of get a little peek into what he's, his business is. I think if we just listen yeah, to all You can really, <laughs> I'm fine with it if you guys are. If you guys think it's good podcasting, I'll trust you. He walked away from me. So, guys, it worked. You're shaming um, work. I believe we were talking about my look, and Neil, I wanted to say that we I were, and then the, I appreciate yeah, the, thank the you. praise. I mean, um, he is rather I'm loud, I would say. Actually, <laughs> it's hard to hear the other uh, talkers, but um, I'm gonna mute. Then I'll mute myself until it's time. Okay, okay, that's perfect. Now, Moshe, you wanted to address your look. Oh, I was just gonna say thanks to Neil for the for the praise, and uh, thank you to you for the praise. I feel like there's two different kinds of people. I've realized. Us because in the, there's people that uh, never change their look and there's people, that's Brent. Brent would be the classic. And then there's people that need to update their look every couple of years. And, and I've always been to update my look every couple of years, but the pandemic kind of put it into overdrive. Now, can we see the back? Do you have a ponytail going on? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> how long are you going to go? I'm gonna go until COVID-19 is eradicated completely from the human genome. And I'm, and then, talking, zero, I'm talking zero cases. I'm not talking like we learn to live with it. I'm talking about it's it completely eradicated. And then what's your, what's your look gonna be there? At that point, I'll shave my head and I'll join a white supremacist organization. <laughs> now, Moshe, with the ponytail, do you have to be a barista at an independent <laughs> coffee shop? Or is that something that you, that's elective? Well, Brent, do you automatically you know, just show up? You find your body walking toward an independent coffee coffee shop, and you're like, "I mean, yeah, hi." And you just have a you you wake up with a 
with a with a fucking apron on, and you you know it's time. Neil, your your look currently on this walk with the the, the akimbo mask. I if I see you for one second, two seconds, I see oh he's doing a mask technique. One second, I'm like oh Neil just got out of surgery and had some a goiter, just a a neck goiter removal. Let's, well, um, let me start with this. I know ahead, that friend. you guys, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to sort of lean back a little bit and let you guys do your thing. Cause this is sort of a champs reunion and I don't want to, sure. you know, mess, you know, kind of be, I'm not part of that. So, but I would, I will say this to be a f- true reun- reunion, you usually have a black guest, right? We have one right now. He's walking next to Neil. <laughs> We do. I mean, that's if you want to, if you want to, if you, I mean, if you want to get into it, we do. We do technically yeah. have a guest. I guess that's turn, true. Turn your phone 30 degrees to the right and we'll, it'll be the champs all over again. There it is. Hey. <laughs> that is the, of course, um, that. my buddy, the, the rapper Wawa. Would have been, would, would have been a perfect champs guest. I know. He just referred himself. He was never a guest, but he would have. We could have used him. Uh, say the name I, again. Um, anyhow. Yeah, say the name Wale. again because you, you froze up right when you said his name. I, Moshe heard it. Wale. It's Wale, the very famous rapper. Hey, have you guys started? Neil and I were texting each other recently about how much money we would currently be making had we continued to do the podcast. Had we gotten past our, you know, our meaningless now small problems we would be making hundreds of thousands of dollars an episode we quit right before the money train came into podcasting we would probably be making let me think about this hold on Uh, we'd be making 10 g's an episode i think more because we would have grown we would have been blown up we were already there oh right yeah that's true we would have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Doug, you would have been rolling in the pounds. I made a big mistake by quitting the champs. We well, let's all go, made a mistake. Let's we go quit. back to the beginning because I'm going to just tell the story of how it all came to be. Because I was, yep. I was in Chicago doing a show. I believe it was at Charlene Yee had a show at the hideout. And me, Correct. me and Neil were openers. And I never met Neil before. And I went up before Neil. And then when he went on stage, he said, come up on stage with me and keep making your, your sounds, your, uh, get, you know, keep jamming on your sampler. So I just like did drops during his set at some random, it, I almost feel like it was a daytime show or something. It, wasn't it like a, it like was a- like early, it was early evening. Like the beginning was like six forty-five, that type thing. Yeah, it was like still light out. So then um, after the show... Can I ask a question? Yeah. Did Neil use, yes. did Neil use the phrase, keep jamming on your sampler? <laughs> keep jamming. Yeah, I said young blood. Hey, young blood. Keep jamming on that sampler. I don't think... He, no, he did not say that. I don't remember what he said. Uh-huh. And I didn't even know they were called drops. And he was saying, you got to keep doing your drops. And I didn't even know... I never heard that word before. Oh, you originated Doug's drops, Neil? That's your phrase. I guess. I what guess. I mean, I didn't. I thought Doug knew it. And then well, I didn't even know that. I just thought there were samples. That's I just I, called them sound bites. Doug's bites. Yeah. Just well, sound, sound bites. Regardless, after the show, Neil said, "We got to do a podcast." <laughs> Not a podcast. We got to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast, and I got this guy Moshe, and I think, and I want you. He just had the idea for the full. Pot, for the full champs podcast right there at the hideout the moment i met him well, yeah the question is is why did you have that thought why did you think moshe and i, I understand already doug because you thought oh he can do these sound bites or drops or whatever you want to call them because you kind of did it during the show but why did you think moshe would be a good part of that uh combination and before i've you- seen because before i, you- I wanted to get somebody who sounded as much like me vocally as possible <laughs> yeah everybody knows anyway this was the pioneer days of podcasting back then it was a really desired trait in a podcast to have two of the hosts be indecipherable 
via audio. That was like really yeah. what would make a show hot. It was like, what if we were like the white Lucas twins, <laughs> but not twins? Neil Shout Lincoln. out to the Lucas twins, big screenwriters now. Neil, they, when, they, they were Black Messiah. Uh, real Judas quick. and the Black Messiah. When when you um when you asked me, were you like, we have to have a third like drops guy, or did you just did that just spring into your head? At the I time? just thought it was fucking funny, and it was like uh, it was you did people had done drops on radio, but your drops were so uniquely stupid. You know what was also unique. Like, Unique, I think, um, about having Doug on is that it was the it was it, podcasting in this weird way is this like meta future radio with all of the like corny cheese taken away, right. advertising taken away, and then put back in after yes. the fact, blah blah blah. But usually it's just like it's this version of radio that you can do whatever you want, and to put a, a show with sound effect drops like morning radio, but in a meta kind of way was was a yeah. weird and borrowing that's kind of cool doug's drops were more mocking than right. celebratory they we would do something we did something more than twice uh doug would somehow go well the, i'll be making fun of that and they stuck with me people having an outdoor party um uh the like for instance i'm in oakland right now is something that that uh has stuck with me and i do still have the drops in my head in life like i'm like hearing i'm in oakland right now or oh, get up I was on at twitter the, at the premiere no less at the premiere no less <laughs> sure, those are some classics <laughs> yeah and it was great because it got, allowed doug to get out hostilities toward us <laughs> via drops. <laughs> Doug yeah, being West very Midwestern <laughs> and not being comfortable with expressing himself, he expressed himself through drops. And that's how I still am. I express myself through other people's words. Played back at them many times because during the champs, that's when I realized I could take drops from you guys and play them back at you it's kind of a funny thing too because the sam when you would sample one of us it would be a re a recognition that we had said something lame enough that it stuck in your mind to be sampled so it was a it, it was a mirror of your own uh it was his, it was just pure hostility <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see it, it pure way. hostility <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm with it. It was fucking funny. Mockery is, if done correctly, I, I welcome mockery as much as praise. Um, hence the, you know, at the premiere, no less, it, you know, makes you think about what you're like. Well, I mean, um, mainly I was doing it. I would never do anything that was purely mockery. It was just supposed to be funny. That's all. But. Go ahead, Brent. Um, what were you going to say earlier? You were raising your hand earlier, Doug, but I don't think Neil could see you. You were going to say something? Oh, I think I might have asked it. It was like, oh. did you, when you were thinking about putting a podcast together, did you want to have a drops guy? Or was it just like, oh, it, okay. It all just came together when it came together, you know? But okay, you, you ha had a joke answer for Moshe, but what, why did you think of Moshe? Why did you want to get, what was it about Moshe that you thought? This is good. Is it because he's from Oakland? Is it was it not. It was. Uh, it was that I saw him at the comedy store and a good crowd work. Ah, okay. So I just right. thought, well, that's, he, is, he is one of the top crowd work. That's good. Guys. Got it. I that thought. Yeah, I think that I remembered Neil. Correct me if I'm wrong. Neil called me and was like, "I did this set with Doug. It was awesome. I want to do a podcast with him, uh, doing doing well, drops, and I want I want well, you to fun. do it too." And then on that phone call, we kind of came up with the concept of what wouldn't it be because Doug was this like DJ character and DJing is a is an adoption of like African American culture and like Neil and I both in very different ways had this sort of uh, affinity or uh, sort of involvement in, in the black community like what would it what would the, the show could be us interviewing black celebrities I, on that call does that sound right Neil? Yeah. That sounds right. I think that's what happened. 
That is the And it was also the thing that the bigger thing was uh Marin and Rogan didn't know any black people. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true too. <laughs> so it was like, well that's we'll get people on that are fun can funny as shit that people don't no one had ever heard of JB Smooth. I'm kidding. You know, and um at, at that time too, I mean there's a lot of black podcasts now, but I think podcasting wasn't as much there weren't a lot nobody of nobody knew podcasts. there were almost none. There were almost no, no. black podcasts. I and uh, I don't, not to toot toot our own horn, but I guess that's what white people that uh, traffic in the black community do is do something and then take credit for for uh -huh. uh, what what happens in the culture. Uh -huh. But I do think I do think that the the champs had some effect on not only podcasts like like Rogan and uh and Marin becoming more aware of needing to book people from outside of a very specific demographic. But I also think in some way, a lot of the guests that we had on the early episodes of the podcast started their own podcasts. By the time we wrapped up the champs, I sort of felt like it wasn't that necessary anymore. Cause I was like, Oh wow, this is like black podcasting has exploded. I'm not saying we're responsible for it, but I, I think it was a good, it was good. It was a matter of time. I think I also don't, I also think we had no effect on Marin or Rogan because I still think Marin's only had Kevin Hart and Obama as black guests. <laughs> uh, um, hey, so. but it's something, it's a start, you know? He was willing to- You know what there. I mean? You know, yeah. Get their names out there. Um, so uh, that's just whatever, I don't, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not like, those guys are, I don't know, they just call them who they can get. Joe Rogan didn't um, really, his podcast wasn't actually even as big then anyway. Is that true? Well, no, now it's a network. Well, no, now it's huge. Obviously, it's not as big because now it's, it, it's been growing every year, but, you know. But what has he done? Yeah, it's massive. It's the biggest I mean, thing. his podcast used to just be him on a video, just, I mean, it was really low. I mean, if you look at the early episodes of the Joe Rogan experience, it's really low budget and just, you know, it's a webcam and Brian Redband. Yeah, it was in his house. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't even called, it wasn't even much of an experience. It was called the Joe Rogan ride back then. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even, it hadn't even transcended. No, it hadn't become into, a full experience yet. <laughs> yeah, just regular <laughs> folks talk. You got an Uber coming? Wale's taken his uh t got the t took where, the hold hint. Hold on, where's where's the crib at? Did you pass it? Uh, it's back there. Is it coming to the crib? Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. I don't yeah. know where I'm at. Yeah, you're right. Wait, that's true. Neil, you that's have true. to wait. What crib? You have to ask him. You have to ask him one question on the camera so that can be an official test episode. He did. He asked him. Yeah. He asked him if he was Uber? getting an Uber. No oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's right. One girl to be like, Oh, can we ask him about this? Can we ask him about the state of hip hop and during quarantine? Oh, sure, sure. That's nice and vague. Um, uh, he's still on the phone. We'll get to him. He's he's about to go home and take a shower. Can you ask him? Wale, what, Wale, can I ask you quickly? What are you about to do? Are you being condescending right now? No, I'm not being condescending. He's about to go home and take a shower right now. <laughs> no, it's a funny right, thing because they're like, ask him what he's doing. <laughs> walking. He's walking. Got a little self-deprecation. You know what I mean? Little, uh, do you want to talk about little therapy? Do you want to talk about um, the things that I gave you? Oh, the amazing, the amazing game changers. I Wale. Even though it's not, it's not, it's it. It always feels like it doesn't feel right, except except for the blue, the blue ones and the other things. I got Wale hooked on microdosing shrooms. Oh, changed my life. <laughs> it's like what blue ones? <laughs> how many? <laughs> but how he, much a day? But I keep getting like the real, the real drugs from people, like trying to get the microdose. Like, uh, I it's microdose is a tenth of a gram, so it's. But, but while I, what I'm trying to tell you is those the ones that you gave me in the black one, those were like, oh, okay, this is where I need to be. This is this doesn't feel like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do. And then the the, the chocolates was another thing, but everything else after that has been like, I want to go home. Somebody sent me a bunch of shrooms. Uh, they sent me a bunch of microdoses. The creative what ones level? that look like some fucking X Men in a bottle, like the little the little thing that they had on the cover. Yeah, see, I, Wale from? does it all the time, and I'm like, I don't, I do no, it. No, I haven't actually in like two weeks. Oh, he's taking but, two weeks off. Bro, Wait, you know, so, because I just I want I need to find like the, he needs to find just the right mushrooms. Yeah. He's on some like he wanted me to get ones. The first ones I gave him, I didn't even remember what they were. 
And, and look at the, the bottle just said creative with a fucking triangle. I thought I was about to turn into an X Men. Oh, so uh, it was yes. a it was the the dose. Blue one. No, they're it, they're microdose. But how many micro? How intoxicated is the one when you take a microdose? I, well, I instructed my patient while I to only take a tenth I of did. a gram. But then you said you took like three, three. That was another. That wasn't yours. From yours. Oh, okay. That was somebody else's. That was like way like they put like turmeric in there. It's like a whole bunch of other shit in there. Like, oh, there was turmeric, and they but they stepped on it with turmeric. They stepped on that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can Man, just see. I can now, see. And now I don't. Neil doesn't even hook me up. Like I don't even fucking. I'm fucking out of them. <laughs> Well, and I, I gotta, put you in touch with. There's no you. way that you could be out of them in your nail no I got way. a hot tip for both of you. I have a hot tip. I have a hot tip for both of you. There are Go. kits that incredible. It's incredibly easy to grow your own mushrooms. You don't have to get hooked up. You can just send away for a kit, and you don't. They but don't take a I lot of maintenance. I don't know what kind. I don't know what kind they were though. The kind that Neil gave me. I don't know what kind they were. What species they were. I don't know. <laughs> species that's where we are with this that's how deep into the game we are yeah, we're in it. but apparently uh, there are kits you just send away all you do is put them in the corner in the dark and you don't have to do anything and then in a few weeks you have mushrooms you're done are you still it could be the uh, sad kind of, you don't want the sad it could kind. be the sad ones so the sad one the sad ones are in here more than they are in the mushroom i feel like it's what you bring to the mushroom are you, right? Moshe, are you still sober you know, I barely, I was about to start microdosing, and then my wife got pregnant, and I decided I didn't want to uh, break my sobriety right as I had a newborn coming into the world. So I just, so yes, I'm still sober. I was wasted when my daughter was born. I was so you drunk. You were? Because <laughs> my, 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 my baby mother was in, was in labor for 20 hours. So like, I'm just like, yo, like every time like it, it starts getting crazy, I just was taking shots, and I just was like, it's like espressos, Red Bull, and a lot of weed and liquor. Just trying to fight. It was. It <laughs> wasn't in DC. It was not. Nah, it was in Seattle. Because we, we tried to do natural, and then they had to induce it. You were so hey. drunk, you thought you had twins. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember is I almost fainted when we were pushing out, and then I, I went outside and instantly became sober. Like I, when the when the wind hit me, I just woke up. Like, and then I walked back in there and seen my daughter. Like, and I was like, "All right, I'm not even nothing." No more. How old's the daughter? She is four now. Uh, she fantastic. she talks so like an adult. Like her her response is like, um, I think I don't want peanut butter today. Actually, like she talks she's like, like that. Full people, yeah. Yeah, this is so crazy. She's so tiny. Is she this wrapping is a it? This episode, FYI. <laughs> um, so uh, so so much. Are you when's 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 uh when's Natasha do? What do you, no, I mean, no, this was years ago. This was my, when my child oh, was Oh, all right. Born. I was, okay, so your I first was like, I, I was, yeah, my, fir my first and only. I was on the fence. I was ready to, to start again. I had been going to, like, psychedelics conferences and reading all about it, and I was like, I want to have this as an experience as conferences. an adult. Yeah, there's, yeah, like, these, yeah, like, there's some, definitely that's, that's some next level white people. I'm going to go to the conference to ask <laughs> them, like, the drug, 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 conferences. drug conferences. We'll literally, we're so confident we're not going to get arrested that we will rent out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rent out a ballroom. We'll have signage. Oh my god! Merch, well, everything. Yeah, merch, fucking I was, flyers. I was. Black people could never get a psychedelic no. conference. Fuck no! Oh my god! I, although, I have you guys seen with... Carl Hart? Their former guest is getting a lot of press for heroin, saying he do he does heroin. Right. Yeah. That, that was really interesting. I, I wonder. It felt like all that they took only the top one percent of it, his right whole now. philosophy. Well, the the book is interesting. I mean, he's just basically trying not to be a hypocrite. Like he's like, drugs aren't. It's a fake argument that drugs are like this wildly destructive thing. Uh, various people that grew up uh, in the crack era are like, it's the it's crazy how destructive it is. And Carl is saying like. But even with that in mind, it should be legal and let people decide. Doug's drop. Right. One, oh, one there we go. Down it's a drop. For 10 minutes, you'd be like, nah, this shit should not be legal. <laughs> that did you guys hear? Nah, anything did that you... makes people that, like, just like, this, like, this fucked up? Nah, bro. Like, you can did legalize you guys... a lot of things. Did you hear what they did in Portugal? In Portugal, they had this crazy um, 
drug problem, like like some like five percent of the population was hooked on intravenous heroin, and they had the same system we have, which is the, the war on drugs, where they would arrest people and throw them in jail for what is not really a criminal but problem, but a, a, a health problem. And Hello, no, they, it's, 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 yeah. They basically right. took. They took all the money. Oh. They changed the law, and they took all. They took all the money from the uh, from the war on drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm walking to you right now. I'm mute, Neil. Right now. Mute, please. No. Well, Moshe. No. We're not mute. No, no, no Hello? more muting. Me? I'm, on, I'm walking up to you right now. <laughs> it's going to be about Neil today. I'm watching, watching cancel. Watch. They're like, mm, sounds black. Four minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sounds black. You should have had Neil um, call the Uber. That's a classic move. So Portugal, move. did they, did they, did they, are they still Portugal doing it? Portugal didn't do Amsterdam. They just made it so the I went. is not a real. But that's what Oregon is now, right? Yeah. I mean, Oregon it was, is it was, I, it was more than legalization. They basically well, took all the Oregon's the one where you're going to be like, all right, is this real? Is this the <laughs> dumbest fucking idea or is this possible? <laughs> well, the is it is the no numbers, though. It is a dumb idea because they didn't do the second part of Portugal's plan, which is they took all the money from the war on drugs and they applied it to, to community systems where they would take a drug addict who like knew how to fix cars. And they would go to a mechanic's office and they would say, you can hire this dude at like one fourth the salary you would pay him and we'll pay the other 75% of his salary and try to rematriculate him into society. And like 10 years later, the opioid epidemic in Portugal was over and these people had kind of like gotten back into society. And the theory is that what happens is people get hooked on drugs and then they get alienated from society. And that's what really causes the problem with drug addiction is that they're just like marginalized. Yeah, is that, well, that's Carl's whole point is, is uh, I mean, I, the, the other thing about certain drugs is like weed's legal. I don't like weed. Yeah. I just don't want to smoke the shit, even though there's a madman right near my house. That's <laughs> but I mean, I just, but heroin is different. I, I think that's different. But like, so my bad. Psychedelics, are, psychedelics, I think it's, it's they're kind of harmless a little bit. But everything is harmless in moderation, even fucking sugar. You know what I'm saying? Wale, but you should have come to the conference. Still the side of the conference. Still the side of the conference. That shit ain't, that shit ain't hurting nobody, man. If you smoke, if well, you, if you take too much, you're work. Trip, take too much, you'll, you'll trip. But if you smoke too much, if you have too much edibles, you're going to trip. So it's just a different kind of vibe. Did you guys, well, hey, Moshe, did you see, and Doug, did you see the, and Brent, did you see the uh, all gas, no brakes kid made a video for Vice kind of about himself? Mm -mm. No. So you know who the all gas, no brakes kid is? No. Uh -uh. Yes. He makes, Doug, you should know him. I know. Uh, he's basically just doing, you know the style that you helped create um the uh uh but he he basically took too many mushrooms and he like his vision's fucked up and his brain's kind of fucked up Jeez. Off Yo, one trip? Off, yeah i don't know it, i'm gonna look into it he just said it on the video it's he took the chocolate sad. he ate the chocolates to you gotta be careful the chocolates are bad? <laughs> no, I, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> no, you're just talking about it. Oh, I was about to say, because, you know, I'm gullible. I, it, it, it took a while for me to just be like, fuck it, I'm going to try it. I was so scared at first. Guys, he is so dumb and gullible. Neil, did he, this happen? I cannot believe it. Neil, it's, did this? I almost feel sad talking to him. Did the um, mushroom thing happen, like, a long time ago, or is it just a recent thing? Uh, I think it happened to him, up. like, five years ago. The, oh, it was like he was like maybe 15, 16. He, he like, uh, you know, he seems fine. Does it seem like he had more, too much at one time or cumulative? I don't. I think it was one time, but I'm not positive. Cause, cause I'll tell you like what that is. Doses. It got to be like the well, wrong strand, bro. No, it no, well, it's not that. I think what it is usually with people like that, it's that they already had a brain chemistry thing going on in their mind. Then they add a chemical and it accelerates whatever mental health stuff they already had going on. That's possible, and that really can happen. If, you're, if you have like a, a, a locked-in like mental illness situation happening, sometimes taking drugs, especially psychedelics, can kind of unlock that demon a little quicker. That's why you might grow. Absolutely. That's why you might grow. That's why that's Wale. He's hitting you with the Italian. That's why you might grow. Can you ask Wale what the micro does for him? Yeah, what does the micro do, do for you? It takes off. As a creator, it just takes off the, this is the thing, with different joints I've tried, some will make me have way more empathy for everything and everybody around me. Some will make me feel like, like, look, like think deeper into what I'm hearing or watching or looking.
the like the when you just get it takes off that first layer of like caring about what other people think. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I, I like it so much. Like, didn't you say something? You were writing rhymes in a yeah, different I, I, I way. Changed, I changed. I changed like my flow pattern. Like I was listening to the beat in another way that I that never happened before. You know what I'm saying? And I was writing some real good stuff. Then I woke up one day and it had no more, and I was like, "Damn, I suck." Yeah. Damn, I had to throw all this music out. People tell me that with weed, like, oh, this, 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 this. I'm like, bro, I, I just feel hot. But with the shrooms, it's like, really, everyone is, has a different personality trait. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, the hell is this, police this is, uh, no, it's funny. Wale, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a uh, cross-training, CrossFit thing near my house, and while I asked if it was a police academy. Because, you know, because shout out to Bobcat Goldthwait. Wait, Neil, I have a question for you. Yeah. Have, have you ever done While Wale's cold... leaving, if you guys can, okay. if you guys want to say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. The food from the same place? One of the bottle, the bottle I gave you actually is from a buddy of mine. It's from a different place. Wait, tell, tell Neil. Tell Neil Please. if you want if you want me to send you one of those kits. Tell Neil I know a guy that can send you one of those kits that you can grow them yourself. So tell Neil if you're interested in that. Of course, be yeah, of course. He's an addict. He's hooked. <laughs> Good okay, luck with so your rap Neil, career. Hey, <laughs> yeah, uh, Neil, oh I have a God. question for you. Could you ask that black dog a question, actually, Neil? This is <laughs> ask, right. ask this him is if he went to school. <laughs> Hey Neil, ask him if he went to public school or if he was bust into a if different ran, neighborhood. If he ran track, um, <laughs> Neil, I have a question for you. Did you yeah. have you taken a, a, a regular dose of mushrooms, like a full on, like I'm gonna have a real psychedelic yeah. trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like pretty, I think over COVID I did. I did it. I did it over COVID, like by myself in in my house. There's a bigger. Was that, I have was a bigger that... drug conversation. Do you, also, do, you, do you live in a kennel? <laughs> seems like everywhere you walk there's a dog barking what are you guys talking about you guys venice is amazing we love animals um, um i have another question neil yeah. was that your first time doing it like are, are you new to no, psychedelic I've been drugs doing, i no. did mushrooms in high school and shit okay i just somebody sent me a bunch of mushrooms they sent me a bunch of micro doses and big doses like a guy who was a fan i guess and um and i mean he was smart because i recommended him to like four people but um the bigger drug conversation is ayahuasca and i've done that over covid and where? that is absolutely fucking bananas where did you do it you're here in la or do you go somewhere i did it i did it in la at a um yeah i did it in la at uh at like a house at like a ranch house just drain with off. a bunch of people which it was kind of stupid but it was before like the first spot in the second spike so strangers it you mean it, it it helped cause the second spike yeah 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 it was a super spreader event. yeah <laughs> um so neil, uh, neil how did it go down can you just walk us through the ayahuasca thing uh first before you yes. do that I have, I have a joke to make can you imagine the amount of aerosols that are produced by 40 hippies vomiting in, in a, a geodesic dome? That's a bad Yeah, it's not. Ready. Yeah, it's a, it, uh, you know, what's funny is I kept saying, like, can you guys test before? And they were, I was the new person. They were like, no, get the fuck out of here. So, so yeah. So we, uh, we, perfect, Doug. So we, um, we do it. It's like Friday night, Saturday night, you leave Sunday. On Tuesday, somebody tested positive. Oh, my God. And it was like, this is why I didn't. And they were like, they were literally on some like, don't worry about it. You can't. Uh, ayahuasca cures COVID. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, of course, because they're and true it, hippies. <laughs> Age um, two, I heard, apparently. I mean, if you think no one's pitched it, you're fucking out. Of, you're naive, my friend. Um, so uh, I got a bunch of I have a bunch of surfers in my life that say that you can't catch it in salt water. That it, the salt water kills it. It's like, okay, you mean the thing you love the most? What a coincidence! Yeah. Oh, that's well, funny. The stomach acids kill it from all the barfing too. 
Could well, that's be. a whole other issue. Um, but so I, I did a private um, with what basically what happened was I always wanted to do it. And then um, somebody had told me about it. I mean, obviously we all know about it, but somebody like firsthand knowledge was like, I did it. It's like this plant knows your deepest secret. And it's like, we're going to talk about this. So I was like, all right, let's see. Let's find out what this plant knows. Um, then champs guest Chris Rock sent me an article from the New York Times and was like, we got to do this. And it was during COVID. So I was like, I can, you can't be on antidepressants. And I was like, you know, I could go off antidepressants. It's not like I have a lot of stress in my life other than like the worldwide deadly pandemic. And uh, so I went off it in antidepressants, I think in like September and did it with Rock in October. And it was great. You did uh, ayahuasca with Chris Rock? Chris Rock yeah. never come on the pound cast. <laughs> or did you do ayahuasca with Rock the drug? Or did you do ayahuasca with the Ro Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Anybody else? <laughs> I think Keith, that's you everybody. Wanna, Keith, you want to get crack, in on that? I meant crack rock is what I was met, meant by rock. No, I heard. Oh, we got it. Wait, okay. so was that? That's interesting. I, I have a few questions. Doug, I know it's your podcast. Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions? This is just like the champs where you guys just do all the talking and I'll do a drop once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm and I have a question really about it too, but you go first. Well, okay. I'll, I'll hold one. My first question about cycling off the antidepressants, like, like, what were you feeling like you could access from the ayahuasca that would be willing, that would be worth the, I, I know you're saying it wasn't much of a risk, but like, you did de-medicate yourself in order to get ready for this other experience. Like, what was it that you were like, this is what I will access and it's worth taking myself off of antidepressants. Well, there's a lot of research saying that ayahuasca is, and it, it like can cure depression, can cure PTSD, uh, can cure. Uh, there's there was an HBO Real Sports story last month, the month before, where an NHL player who was like a straight up goon, like a fu like fucking CTE, like. 20 concussions that he knows of type mm -hmm. thing. Couldn't remember, had all the shit that the, all the concussion shit, the slurred speech and blurred vision and no memory and all that stuff. And he did ayahuasca. He was going to kill himself. And he's like, I'll do ayahuasca as a last resort. And he was cured of all of his shit. So That's crazy. I just, I'm also the antidepressants I was on were, I went on them because I was having panic attacks on stage sometimes. And it was just couldn't, odd. And couldn't I didn't, tell. Neil, we couldn't tell. Well, the ones I, the ones where I had the panic attacks, you could tell. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I have a question. What does that look like? Uh, if we can't, if we would be able to tell what was going on and what was happening with the, you that we couldn't see. The last one I did, I don't think you guys ever saw me have one. I would never put you guys through that. Um, no, the last oh, if one you, I if had. You had if you had seen us in the audience, you would have stopped the panic attack. And <laughs> of course, I would just out of sheer pride. So maybe um, we, we would be a better cure for you than, you know. It's Ayahuasca. possible. I mean, it's, look, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, I didn't have to go to the, to the ranch house. Uh, I didn't have to go to the super spreader event. Um, the last one I had was in England. Um, I went there with non, um, uh, 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 Champs guest Dave Chappelle, although he saw it, came to a taping. At the premiere, no less. Uh huh. Um, did a show in London, and I, I just had a panic attack on stage. Like, I just quit. I literally, they brought me out like way sooner. You know, when they go, like, you're on now, and you're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. So you're already a little jarred. And I was like, couldn't remember my jokes, would, would say, uh, try a joke, words dropping out. Like not working, and luckily uh, Jimmy Carr was there, so I brought Jimmy out, and then kind of collected myself and went back out and did a real show. How many? But at that you... point, I was like, I need to go back on antidepressants. So how uh, many? I need to go back on you... Zoloft. How many? Minutes I probably you did on... ninety seconds before wow. I brought Jimmy out. Wow! So it was a combination of you missing words not knowing what to say it was that was it it was just like not knowing what to uh say. no and also uh uh can't breathe 
can't breathe. Okay. Like, like True. fucking, you're like, like, it's really a bad because I'd never had, I'd had depression. Everybody knows that. But panic is anxiety. Is, I don't have a lot of anxiety. And it was so much worse because it feels like you're getting shocked the whole what time. What was the anxiety from, do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, I truly don't, I couldn't tell you. Like, it do you wasn't. Think that the... I don't think I'm supposed to have anxiety. I think I just got. Do you think right. that the only, audience. Only, anxiety is only. Um, people with panic attacks, they. Uh, it's only meant for people who uh, are good at having panic attacks. What? That was a joke. Um, I've, uh, I've had them before. Oh, and um, Something kind of unconscious or subconscious sort of triggers it. And then you're. I don't know. Did this happen to you, Neil, where your heart is just racing for like no reason? Your body goes into a fight or well, flight? Well, that's what it was. It was nothing in my life had changed. I, the, uh, this is, I'll tell you the whole story of my uh, panic attack journey. Um, I was doing three mics in New York and felt generally good. and was like, I don't think I need to stay on antidepressants. So I like weaned myself off. I was doing great. Met some guy who was like, hey, would you ever want to like take human growth hormone <laughs> uh, like peptides? And because I'm a moron, I'm like, yeah, I would do that. Um, so the guy gave me like cream that was uh, HGH. Because I'm like anti-aging, like what's the downside? More energy, there's seemingly no downside. I think the you're covering the mic, by the way, right now. Sorry. Uh, no, yeah, no, I, I think uh, I did something weird. No, no, no it sounds good. better. It sounds better now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, so. So I started taking HGH like maybe July of 2016, and then I started having panic attacks in maybe two weeks into it. Did I you, taped, did you correlate that? I was or taping. Just... No, I mean you could say like. The Netflix taping for three mics is coming up, so you could make a case that I was flipping out about it. But I was, but then I got one in that uh, that Sprite commercial with LeBron James. I was like said hi to him in his trailer. Got one then. I got a. I actually got one in a Comedy Central meeting. It like these weren't really high stress situations. Wait, it what are you talking Doug's about? Point, you're saying your Netflix taping meeting LeBron James and a, and a no 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 the Netflix taping <laughs> I was focused for but I got a panic attack the night before at the comedy store right so like the the Comedy Central thing I wasn't like this is the one right 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 um, but so then I basically went on it and then I kept getting them and I was like finally let me just go back and sell left and I haven't gotten one since um, can I ask okay so. Walk us through the ayahuasca ceremony. What did you, how did it work and what did you feel and see, et cetera? The first time I did it was at Rock at a place that you ran in by the beach. So that was just nice and like. Your internet connection is getting I feel like we're, ha we're having an ayahuasca uh, maybe. Uh, experience right <laughs> so now. Uh, half hour felt like your video here. But like Neil, shrooms will have like two. <laughs> Neil, <laughs> Neil, uh, Neil, your internet connection is dropping out. Can you go back inside, perhaps? Your internet yeah. connection is somehow getting worse. And Moshe, while he's getting back in or whatever. Is this any better? I think so. Yeah. Okay. okay. I had a question. Um, I had a question. For wait, you let him finish. About. Let him finish the my question first. Now that he's back. Um. And so, like, you'll have like a on mushrooms. You'll have like a funny, like very funny thought every 20 seconds. Like a kind of a bit, like mushrooms is a very bitty drug to me. Uh, ayahuasca, the first probably hour, I was having like 10 ideas in 20 seconds. Like so much more condensed brain activity that I was laughing out loud. Like this is fucking crazy how funny this is. Not like I was coming up with great bits, but just the speed of like, this, 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 this. And it wasn't chaotic or scary. It was just funny. Uh, and then I, and then like it transitioned into, this will tell you like what it was like, uh, uh, or what it was. I cried for two hours straight about people. 
my gratitude for people. Um, so I don't know, like it was just a very um, fortifying. It's and then the third time I did it, I basically was in. I was like, oh, this is like a god force, and I'm an atheist. And I was like, oh, this is a god force. Like I'm no longer an atheist. This is like absolutely a god force. Wait, well, you that's what people, believed in... Sorry, go ahead. No, but that's what people say about ayahuasca. Is that they call it like the, the god molecule or something like that. Like Yeah, people it's, DMT, regularly it's a spirit molecule, yeah. Yeah, people regularly report feel, having these feelings of coming in contact with a deity in the middle of their trip and it, or something like that. So it's, and yeah, mine was never... Some people actually speak to like mother ayahuasca. I haven't had that. I just had like... The, I mean, the thing I said, it's like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark is where their faces melt when it's like the spirit swirling. I've like had that Wait, a so lot. Neil, are you currently an atheist and are you currently on medication for antidepressants? No, so here's the punchline. So, so that was September. I went off Zoloft and I have, I've done uh, ayahuasca four different times since during COVID and I don't think I'll ever be on antidepressants again. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fucking crazy. That's and are really you crazy. are you no longer an atheist? Yes, I'm no longer an atheist. Whoa, I'm an I'm gonna take ayahuasca. Minister. I mean, if you, I don't know. That's what it did for me. It was, it was. But by the way, the thing that made me realize that, or not even realize, just think, you know, it, ayahuasca does a thing called neurogenesis, which is it like creates brain cells. Um, and like, there's a study that I can send you guys, uh, but the, it was a really, really bad trip for lack of a better word that right. afterward, maybe a week later, I realized that there was like still a dip in my mood. Like, like if your floor, if you're, if you, if you think of your mood as like a, a floor, right. Just like, or like a level. Like, it will not go below this. I had, like, sort of warped floorboards that still went down a little bit. And I had a very bad ayahuasca experience, and it's been flat since. And it's not going to be unflat um, ever again, I don't think. Which is fucking insane. Like, it changed my brain cells. Uh, Brent, go I, ahead. I wonder if that's how – that's a, a major factor – not the only factor, but a major factor in how religions get started is somebody taking a drug. And I'm talking, you know, in the thousands of years ago, taking a drug uh, of like a natural drug of sorts or something they don't even know is a drug, but they take oh. it and they have a, a, hallucin uh, a hallucination. And then that's how the lore starts to begins the kernel. I, I, mean, I, I had the thought on it and I, this is so fucking the hippiest thing since whatever Moshe said, um, uh, I had the thought religion is a perversion of ayahuasca. Hmm. Right. It's like the same dynamics. It's the same. It is a thing that, uh, by the way, there's a church in Brazil called Santo Daime where instead of giving uh, like the body of Christ thing that Christians do, they give you ayahuasca and they give it to little kids too. Well, there's that famous story, the famous Ramdas story. I'm sure some, maybe one, a couple of you know it. Ramdas is like this famous acid guy from the 60s who became like a Eastern religious leader. And he went, his, his guru was the Swami, I don't remember the guy's name, very famous guru. And he went to him in the 60s and he had a big vial of acid. And the guru is like, so you're the acid guy, huh? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, so what is this acid? And Ramdas shows him the bottle. And he takes the whole bottle, which is like 400 doses, eats it, all of it. And they're like, no, guru, no. And uh, he just sits there silently for like four hours. And it's like, and then uh, they're all like worried he's going to have like a heart attack. And then he goes, uh, something, uh, he, he goes, yeah, it's close, but it's a little messy or something like that. It's like basically <laughs> it was exactly what he was, had already been doing and had no well, real there was somebody, There was oh, a story... Funny like not long ago about somebody taking like 500 times like a like an uh, 500 doses of lsd 
and she had a she had like really bad like migraines and shit before it, and it all cleared itself up like eighty percent. Brent, to your question, I wanted to to tell you something that I learned. Can I can I do a quick joke real quick before you get into that? Of course. Uh, yeah, Ramdas. Um, I'm more familiar with PEMDAS. You know the order of op- operations when um, doing mathematics. You know parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition. It was worth. It was worth it. It was worth it. Go ahead. I think Go it was. Ahead. I wish we had stopped for twice the length that we stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so well, um, that. Carry Neil, on. do you have your do you have your palm over the camera now? Yeah, I think your ball side. He was okay. picking his oh. nose. Wait, check this out, Brent. To your question, could religions have started from ayahuasca? There's a no, There's not just fruit. ayahuasca, any drug, you know. Any drug, totally. M- Moses, the burning bush, like that's a theory, right? Like Jesus in the desert, what did he find in the desert? You know, maybe he went and had a trip, whatever. But there's a theory that takes that even further called the smart ape theory, which is that actually, hum- now this is super, this is evolutionary biology, super unproven. But it's this idea that way back in, you know, prehistoric days before the human pe- the being was around, they had these apes right, our, our ancestors who were wandering around and one ape walked to a tree, whatever, an ayahuasca tree or a mushroom bush or whatever, and ate it and had this fucking mind expanding like trip, went to the other apes in his tribe and was like, you know, come here apes and, and like was like, eat this shit. And that, that is actually the origin of human super intelligence. And that's the reason that we, that we split is because an ape found psychedelics in the wild. I mean, it's unproven, but it's well, there's, there's also some logic that thing of it. like that's the first time they walked upright. It's really like sort of specious, but you know, it's fun. It's no more. I get the 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 ayahuasca thing. Also, like when they talk about medicine man, like Native American medicine man, the, it's ayahuasca is the medicine. Right. I think it's um, probably more likely that just. You know, the smarter apes are the ones who, you know, outlived the no, that's dumber totally apes, true. and then that, that's, that's how. That, that's totally true and evolutionary. What you should think sound. about doing is an ayahuasca session. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally true and also evolutionarily more sound. But the idea, the question is like, how does one ape become smarter than the other? It's not saying they ate mushrooms and the next day they were people. It was that they ate mushrooms and they became a band of, 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 of apes that were slightly smarter and that, that through time, I'm, I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying there, there is, there's more to it than just like hippie. Well, uh, I would bullshit. just imagine that there's variation in people's intelligence levels as there are even in today's human being world. And uh, that, you know, the smarter you ones be, are gonna- You might be right. I'm just saying it's a theory. Right. Now I have a question for you, Neil. Yeah. Was it weird? So you're taking, your first time you did it was with Chris Rock? Yeah. Was it weird? I know you guys are real friends and all that, but was it weird to be in a state of that kind of vulnerability with a person of that stature and that kind of, like, was there something about that that was intimidating or weird to be, I would want to do it with somebody I didn't know at all. Certainly not somebody that was like, a, 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 I don't know, a figure of that magnitude. And, does that make any sense, that question? Well, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, like, I had Bijan, the editor, who did Chappelle Show and the specials, did Bill Burr, did whatever, my special, a bunch of shit. Um, and Bianca from the store, um, and a few, and, and so I don't, it might have, I, I, the, I, at this point, like, it just wasn't, um, but, it, I guess it could have been. I, the other thing about, about ayahuasca is it's very, like, you don't, it's not very communal, even though you are communing. It's, you kind of aren't supposed to touch other people. You're not supposed to really talk. So it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I mean, Bianca had a, had a, like, part of her journey was she thought we all died. And, uh, and in her hallucination, rock actually said to the shaman like you killed chris rock <laughs> like, now, he was like i was doing good man you killed chris rock um so that was about the extent of the the fame element of it. uh two questions one did you puke and stuff and two uh did did your friends that went with you did they have a good experience uh overall they, was it yeah, they, they had a very, 
Well, Rock had a good experience. He puked. Bijan puked and had a good experience. Bianca didn't puke. Paula didn't puke. I didn't puke. No, with I have one. subsequently puked. But like the funny thing about like ayahuasca being associated with vomiting is is uh, people. Uh, that's the thing that people kind of latch onto. But think about the amount of people that puke from alcohol. That's what I could think. Of. Like just no, like it. It's not. It's not a. Some people puke. Some people don't. Can I jump in with a really good joke? I would love it. <laughs> when when Chris Rock puked, did he turn to you and say, "Can you smell what the Rock is puking?" <laughs> he didn't. He actually went to the bathroom. I thought he was shitting his pants. Okay. <laughs> now, Neil, during uh, your during your trip, were you like aware of your surroundings, or was it just like you're in a, 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 a like a cartoon land, or or what? Uh, no, I was. I it was. I was very aware. Like I was. The cool thing is, you're you're. It's like a dual awareness where you're in this crazy sort of distant uh idea and then you're also like my my neck is itchy you you can like be you can do both did i ever tell you guys, did i ever tell you guys not to change the subject but my chris rock champ story one of my one of my moments of humiliation man i'm not with that all right which one of my many moments of humiliation in uh, a self-generated humiliation in my life. I was right yeah. on, on the MTV Movie Awards. Right By the way, you started going into that just now without hearing Neil say, yeah, that's fine. What? I'm just kidding. You, you, you said, can I tell you the story about this? And then you started to go into it without he getting a comp. Oh, sorry, Neil, is that okay? He did say yes, eventually. Okay. You had already started, so. So. I, right after we did the Champs interview of Chris Rock, I was writing on the MTV Movie Awards and he was one of the presenters. And uh, I, it was the night of the tape night and he walked in and I made a, like a, a super demonstrative play. I was standing with all the writers, but I made this like really big performance. Of, maybe it's bigger in my mind now because it was so embarrassing of going like, excuse me, everybody. I gotta, I gotta go say hi, hold on because I know him, excuse me, pardon me for a moment. And I kind of elbowed my way past all the writers and was like, rock, like not, not high. I just uh, rock like we were old cousins. And he looked at me and the look was, um, you know that look where someone definitely doesn't know who you are. And I was like, it's me from Neil's podcast. I like gave the podcast away. I wasn't, it wasn't my podcast. It was just like, and anyway, with the, I just slunk back to the writers. was like, yeah. Anyway. And he just kind of like, oh, hey, man. Exactly. The saddest part of the story was me giving my podcast away. It was like, wasn't even, I wasn't even a co-host. It was just like, it's Neil's podcast. Huh? Yeah, but, you know, sure, in that yeah. situation. Were you embarrassed pretty hardcore about that? Or? It was, the, the, the embarrassing part was not that he didn't remember me. It was that I was such a buffoon beforehand. I could feel how, like, blustery I was walking into it. It was just like, pardon me a second, everybody. Well, this is no, my friend. No, I'm thirsty. not saying embarrassed in front of Chris Rock, but to the other writers, were you oh, kind of yeah. just thinking... It was awful. And did they see that? Did they notice what oh, happened? I think they noticed it. The whole thing was hilarious, and I deserved every, everything about it. Another hilarious thing that happened, that same taping, Johnny Depp came. He was also a, a presenter. And his, he had, like, a huge security guard. And you know, you know Maggie Mull, uh, Neil? I know of her, yeah. She's small. And, like, she's a small person. More and, like Maggie Small. Yes. And <laughs> she was about... I don't know, 15 feet away from Johnny Depp when he walked into the room and her, the security guard walked over to her and like shoved her out of the way. Like so unnecessary. There was no reason at all for that to have happened. She was just like five feet tall and not even close to Johnny Depp. And then Johnny grabbed the security guard's sleeve and whispered, thank you. I'm a rock star. <laughs> Wait, I hope is... that Maggie sues him in British court. And then it's a big tabloid thing, because uh, God knows Johnny Depp doesn't ever hit women. <laughs> hey, did you um, hear? Uh, did you actually hear that his girlfriend? Um, she may have been the abuser in the relationship. Did you hear? Yeah. Amber Heard. 
Ooh. Yeah. I, it felt like a setup. <laughs> <laughs> you make me want to do ayahuasca, really, really, on a genuine level. Brent, is there any part of you that? I, 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 this is what this is what I'll say. It Are was, you on it now? It changed. I'm not on it now. I am going to be on it next weekend. It changed the trajectory of my mental health. Now, like I said, I've had like demonstrably very bad experiences on it um but they've all been they were bad in the short term and long term they've been positive so you know what the people at these psychedelics uh, conferences call bad trips you're looking for a better word they don't use the term bad trip they say difficult yeah. difficult trip <laughs> yeah difficult difficult journey i'm yeah. serious it's true I really yeah. no i know I always, I there's generally... no such thing as there's no such thing as bad in their world it's you know there's I nothing say, negative I mean, about I, it yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I usually don't say bad trip. Usually I say uh, difficult journey because I'm a, a real douchebag. But the bad trip or uh, difficult journey that it's so, it's sort of like you struggle through something kind of like a tough yoga session where afterwards it's rewarding or no? Yeah, I, it was uh, the most terrifying thing that I've ever experienced. Wow. Doug, would you come back for next weekend? You're you're getting back on. Well, I've already gotten back on since that bad experience or that that terrifying experience, and and between you, me, and the podcast, I was um, a, not panicky and not anxious. I was a little scared for about six weeks after the for a combined about maybe eight weeks in that because what because i basically felt like i kind of lived in a bible story if you if like it was terrifying in like in a death way but it was terrifying also in a way that was i felt that the, a, a different time i felt like i was in the rapture and I wasn't, but I thought I was. And it's a fucking, it's the, it's the, you know, you think people, uh, people are sort of comforted by the idea of a, of a God in, a, in an afterlife and spirit world. Um, I would argue that most people don't actually believe it. And I uh, kind of experienced it to the point of believing it. And then it's scary. Neil, can I it's ask a, it's like a scary reality to actually believe it. Can I ask you what I think is like the obvious question about something like that? Like you're a smart uh -huh. dude. You're a smart dude and a pretty cynical guy too. I, I yeah, I, well, that's the thing is I, I get like, I'm almost glad I was so cynical before. Right. No, I mean, what's, attra I, what's attractive to me about what you're saying is I sort of feel like I have that same cynicism in a way. And like, uh -huh. why don't you just chalk that experience up to like wow what a hallucination what what is the linkage that you're making to wow that was real on some weird level on some yeah. there was something i tapped into uh it's it's it, the feeling of it like it's not uh it's not you know it's if you have a weed experience where you're like, whoa, what's going on? You know you're stoned and you know there's all these assumptions that you know it's kind of fake and you're like, wait a minute, are we, huh? Are we like, is, there, is, is someone like watching us from out whatever hallucination you have? You kind of know it's real, but you kind of know it's fake. This was, um, I don't know how to explain why it was real to me other than the level of ex the depth, I guess, to, of the feeling was so matter of fact. Doesn't that just make you feel like it was just a stronger drug? Uh, yeah, I know. But it was also at the afterglow. Like there was a, like, there, uh, the the for the the first time I did it with Chris, it was like I was nicer for like ten days. Second time I did it, I was nicer for like seventeen days after it, and um, it wasn't like I wanted to be better to people because I was worried about uh, Christian God smiting me or something. It was just 
I want to do better to people because it was just like, ah, that's the right thing to do. What I, I also didn't need to correct myself from like a negative instinct. I would just have a positive instinct and not have to, you usually have a negative instinct. You're like, yeah, don't be an asshole. Dude. Doug, you have to like to, rein yourself in. To answer, Doug, we should have, Doug, we should have given Neil ayahuasca when we did the chance. I, and look, you, you, you're not wrong. <laughs> it was just a zinger. It was just a zinger, Neil. Yeah, no, but you know what? I could have used uh, it too, uh, to be honest. Okay, I was a grouch. <laughs> there we go. Now, Moshe, you, now you apologize. I think I was good. Yeah, I think I was solid. <laughs> All right, fucking <laughs> typical Moshe. Um, no, I could have taken it too. Listen, I think we can all agree we could have taken ayahuasca together, and it would have together. <laughs> To answer Moshe's question earlier is that I, you know how you said, you asked me if I would ever consider taking ayahuasca, right? You, is that what you asked me just now? Yeah, but I already know. You know the answer, I guess. But the thing is, is you said this at the beginning of the show that you know how you like to update your look every two months or whatever the case may be, and I stay the same. Well, it's the same thing with drugs this is why I don't use drugs is you I don't don't like change at all like i like to be i like to think the same i always want to do you know I, I like what i'm used to and i you know that's I ne and i also don't feel a lacking at all as far as i don't feel a need to expand my mind in any kind of way i feel very satisfied with how expanded my mind is as it, as it is and you know there's there's no there's no i don't feel any lack of something or i or, or there's no issue like depression or something like that where I, I oh I want to change this depression about me or whatever or anything like that I don't have that so there's no reason I have no desire to change I want to be the same stylistically and mentally and uh -oh. that's the and that's the arrogance that's gonna keep you away from my ass. <laughs> okay guys look we gone an hour um, no I don't I mean as you said that I was like you know, I a part of me is like, hey, but I do always want to. Yeah. Change. Like that's the, the, I think that's one of the nice, one of the, if you can say something nice about me, it's like, I'm, I don't like stand pat with the way I am. Like I, and I don't hate myself either. I just feel like I just can fucking. I'm with you on that, Neil. What? Like my thing, my thing is like listening to you talk about it. And my, the reason I was thinking about doing psychedelics before our kid came along and then I just didn't want to complicate that narrative. It just felt like there were two stories that were lap overlapping and I didn't want to overlap them. But yeah. it's like, it's not about like, I feel a lack. It's about, <clears throat> I want to experience all of the different vistas of experience that the world has to offer. And I've never done psychedelics as an adult looking for an, a, a, a a meaningful spiritual experience. I've only done them as a teenager looking for a way to party. And, I, and that, it wasn't like I'm missing something. It was like, oh, that's a thing that I would like to try. It was a thing I'd like to add, not a thing that I felt like was missing. By the way, I don't, I'm not against uh, uh, growing, by the way. No, I, I, I think growing and changing is, um, or, even though growing is kind of a change, but I think I mean it differently than like, I'm I'm for growing, but you should do I'm not for changing. I mean, for me. By the way, I'm drinking um, ayahuasca. Uh, you could better, I know a guy. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly wrong. Um, yeah, it's it's not really a party drug. It's like a weird. I mean, in some ways, it feels like you're going in for a medical procedure. It's odd, man. I, that's all I can say. Spiritual like, surgery. Don't they call it spiritual really, surgery? Yeah, there's another one of those things that people say about it. Like it's and without being too lofty, um, I'm better off for having done it. Neil, was there was somebody keeping an eye on everybody or what? Yeah. And, and his name you, is Jesus. <laughs> um, you trust you trusted them? Uh uh, yeah, I had no reason really not to. Um, the yeah, that was the guy was, that uh, told you you couldn't get COVID yeah. in an ayahuasca tent, so you had no reason not to trust that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mentioned five G in one of his uh, <laughs> speeches, so I was like, oh boy. Um, yeah, like there, that there's certain parts of the the kind of experience that you just have to ignore. Um, in terms of like, oh, this is some goofy shit, right? 
Um, but I don't, it, I've been to enough 12 step program meetings where you just go, yeah, it's like, take what you want, leave the rest where you take the useful parts and ignore the embarrassing parts. Well, look, you guys, we've gone over an hour now. That was, that's usually what we do. If you want to keep hanging out, you can, there's no pressure, but we should probably wrap up the main episode here. Um, what do you, and what do you keep going for, for, for literally for like a extra thing? An extra, like extra bit for the only fans. Yeah. <laughs> is it for, is it for Patreon or something? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. if you, if you if you want to hang out, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm gonna take off. I got to. I gotta go take the kid. But um, extra. Thing. Mosley, Thanks. you love the the thing you love most about the kid is the excuse, the built-in excuse. To get right? off of any podcast at any time. It's pretty. Hey, perfect. I. You any know what? I, I actually do kind of as somebody who's known Moshe a long time, and I, and someone who is adverse to change. I didn't didn't really didn't like the idea of him considering using uh microdosing or whatever and so i really am thankful for the kid that excuse for the kid that it that's prevented that's, him the from, part, that's the positive part of my child is that i didn't do drugs yeah okay yeah um yeah it's it been nice though uh, measure, do you like having uh i guess you can't really talk about the kid in a short way right what say it again uh, like a part you can you talk about having a child in a brief way oh yeah i mean it's like you know my friend jacob Zeroff said the thing that i think is the, the the truest truism about parenting is that all the cliches are true like it yeah. really is all true that the, the 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 part where you you know there's like this I, this they say like i had issues in areas i didn't know i had issues i didn't know i had areas have you ever heard that like you know yeah i i feel like i have love in areas that i didn't know were areas anymore it's like this expansive version of love that i didn't it wasn't a, it wasn't something i was even aware existed it's like one thing i've said before it's like you know i'm i'm a kind of classic jew in that i'm obsessed with death and it's like a real fear and i always am afraid of it and it's super self um self-focused it's never about your death or the death of the people i love it's always like uh you know what's gonna happen when i die it's about palestinians bits of a palestinian <laughs> yeah no definitely not yeah so it's like <laughs> it's just a very immature version of being afraid of death it's just like me what about me i i i and when she's now that she's in my life it's uh, there's a new I, I, it's weird to describe a positive thing in such a negative way, but my anxiety, the aperture of my anxiety has expanded too. It's like, okay, we'll all die and I'll be gone, but it also, it breaks my heart that I'm going to leave this person and that they're not going to have me and I'm not going to have them and I'm going to miss parts of her experience of life. And like, it's totally kind of like what you're talking about with ayahuasca, like a fundamental re- molecular reconfiguration of my entire attitudinal bent on life yeah i was just going to say it's a great alternative to ayahuasca having a kid um because it's it's you're getting all this uh enlightenment and stuff and yet um there's no vomiting yeah well there's yeah, a lot well, of vomiting. not but there's there actually, is some yeah. diarrhea on the part of your kid probably. the baby does the vomiting vomit. and diarrhea no but but um, also she's like you're seeing this creature. I mean, I know, again, this is all going to feel cliche, but you see this creature who hasn't yet learned to be prideful and hasn't yet learned to be, uh, to be mean and hasn't yet learned to be afraid of things and hasn't yet learned what anxiety is or what Trump is or what COVID anxiety or, or, or insecurity or, or resentment or it's this super pure being of like just experiential joy and like adding that to my life was the biggest experience I've ever had. No, yeah, I mean, that's almost identical with another comedian said to me, which is it's, it opens up a part of your brain you didn't know existed. It's like exactly 40 what you're of your, Literally, he went like this. Right. Like, but he said it's like 40, and he said especially men don't know. Yes. That it's just like, what the fuck? It's like a, a hidden chamber that's a big it becomes a big part of you well you know men are like obsessed um, with this fear of intimacy and the experience that's usually romantic intimacy that we have a problem with but the experience of having a kid is so intimate because you're immediately struck with the reality that this person is there close to you for the rest till till you die like no questions asked that person will be there and 
will be emotionally linked to you that like any of that like I could have been this I should be I'm not saying this is true for everybody but it's like oh I could be like a I could still be a fluttering playboy in the world like doing things my way it's just gone that 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 spirit is dead in me in a way that is very enjoyable now Neil would you continue, um, do you want to have a kid with Chris Rock I still I still don't even with my even with Chris Rock I would say no <laughs> um, I still don't want to. Somebody was I even with God in your life now. Memo. Say again. Even with God in your life now. To help. I, yeah, I'm still not inspired to do it. Somebody, somebody, another comedian today left sent me some voice memos about how he thinks I should have kids, and it was it's it's uh, yeah, it's just a weird. I don't. I can't explain it. I don't feel inspired to. The good news about being a guy is I, you can do it right at the end. You do a Jamie Masada, uh, pull a Jamie Masada yeah. and have yourself one at like 76. By the way, I don't think, I have not come to the conclusion that some parents do that like people that don't want kids are in some sort of like, uh, you know, denial or unevolved place. I don't think that that's true at all. I don't think it's an experience for everybody. And I don't think it's, it's a superior experience to not having kids. It's just this different. It's really, really similar to what you're talking about with ayahuasca. It's like no, I, well, I, yeah, that's how it felt like the day after. You feel like wow, I just went. I saw this. I remember Dave when Dave had his first kid. He's like, you cannot see that happen and be an atheist. Obviously, people do, but like it's a, it's, it's really seems profound and involves life and death and. A bunch of shit. I totally respect the feeling in you, and uh, and all the people that have encouraged me to do it. I just, I don't know. I feel like it should be. You should kind of be called to it, and I'm not called to it. I don't want to resent. Any, I don't want to resent a kid. But you want to bear. You want to no, less for me than for them. You want to go bareback though, right? <laughs> I mean, you know I love bareback. You know that. You got to be well, called. You to know that. that about me. That's a whole. One thing you might not be getting. I mean, though, you got to call. That's one of the byproducts of ayahuasca is that you can have unprotected sex and there's no way for you to impregnate the woman if you don't will it. <laughs> it's just what the it's just what the plant does, gang. It's what the plant does. Well, also, if you, um, go, ayahuasca, go, uh, if you use ayahuasca and uh, never mind, go on. Yeah, I gotta go um, uh, to uh, take care of Moses' kid. Okay, we we both gotta take care of my kid. <laughs> All right, bye, bye fellas. Good talking. Same here. Okay, uh, fucking with bye the champs. <laughs> All right, thanks for uh, joining uh, the Poundcast, guys. Really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully Peace, see you guys sometime soon. Hey. Bye guys. Okay, Later. bye Moshe. And let's just officially wrap like wrap up this episode. Yeah. Um so um now you wanna, you're fucking with the champs. If you want to hear basically a bonus episode, not even you know we we call them after dark, which is like a continuation thing, but I think it's really just they're kind of their own episodes. Now know? what what Brent and I are about to do, we're going to break down and just talk one on one with no <laughs> Outdoor noises and with no noises, no dogs barking, no um, internet going in and out, uh, all this that. Is one on one, we're gonna go one on one, and we're gonna talk to each other about all kinds of stuff. And if you want to do that, go to Patreon.com/slash/Poundcast and sign up today. It's very cheap, and it's a way to support our show. So we keep doing what the we're best doing. way to support the show. The best way, and you get something out of it too. Yeah, go to Louis. Also, if you want to support us, go to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com and use the code word Poundcast for your entire order because they're a well, cool sponsor and we appreciate them. Um, let's uh, let's say goodbye. Okay, thank you for listening, and we'll see. Oh, you next time. I guess let's say I'll say this. Sorry, thank you real quick to our um, our our the thank you to the uh, our staff. I don't know staff. Our members. staff. Our staff. our staff. Thank you to our staff. Um, Chloe Bonilla, Jack Birch, Jackie Montana, um, and Jack Birch, his, his uh, videos and things 
he does on his own is uh, Jack Bur- uh, L. Bircho is what you can his find. His L. Dot Bircho on Instagram. Check him out. You can go to our podcast page on Instagram and uh, see what Jackie and Jack have been doing there. And they, they do, there's some cool, they do fun stuff. And it's cool because they don't even like run it past us. You know, they just put, they just like run it. And it's like, I mean, they, I think they generally do. I mean, I th- well, some stuff. Yes. I mean, most of the stuff they run past us, but yeah. I don't know. I like it. I like it either way. I've trust them. They're great. We appreciate all their hard work. We'll see you next week. Peace.